what's up again there guys Brian here the three topics gamer share share if you would pretty awesome tier list style ranking video to share with you guys today now my most recent top 10 list video which was requested by one of my awesome viewers I happily shared my top 10 favorite Capcom games and for those of you that know me pretty well know that Resident Evil 4 is obviously going to take the top of the list of not only being my favorite Capcom game of all time and being my favorite Resident Evil game of all time it currently stands as my you know fifth favorite video game of all time and it has just so many awesome some qualities that a lot of even top tier video game AAA titles can't even match. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to do a tier list style ranking of all the enemy varieties in that game that helped make Resident Evil 4 the iconic classic title that it is? So that's why we're here today. Uh, if you do happen to enjoy this video by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Keep track of me on my future videos. And remember, if you guys have any ideas for future tier list rankings or top list videos or discussion of videos or just, you know, videos in general, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and I will try to get them up as soon as possible. Now, I did happen to find this pretty awesome tier list ranking starting now. Uh, and I decided to kind of customize a little bit on my own uh, in terms of how I would rank them. So just going from the bottom up, uh, I would rank them as if it, they get an F, they're not a threat at all, to just an enemy that's annoying with D, being an average threat with C, needing to really stay alert with B, being challenging with A, and uh, of course there are a few contenders for the title of being an absolute nightmare and even to this day still freak me out. So let's start off with the bottom. Uh, I think the only enemy on here uh, I would say is just not really a threat. It's probably just the standard uh, parasite itself. Uh, I, I can't be sure if this is just a parasite or this is supposed to be the parasite that pops out of the head of some of the Granado enemies because there's some enemies that as soon as you do enough damage to the body, the parasite will come out of the head and then it'll actually detach and try to attack you on their own. Those are the ones I don't consider to be a threat at all. Those can be taken out with like one or two shots using any gun. So yeah, I don't. I, those ones I don't take all this seriously. And as I look at the rest of the list, I think that is the only one that I would say is just flat out not a threat. Going on to the D ranking as just being annoying, I'm actually going to put the average Granados on there. Um... One on one, they're not a threat at all. I could have easily put that in the F tier, but I think that in a group, um, it's definitely something you very much need to kind of be alert of and a little bit annoying because I mean, you know, if you're talking about like some of the standard grenades that you can kind of like over the course of the first section of the game, like the more like villager ones. I mean, these guys are carrying, you know, axes and farm tools and pitchforks and stuff like that. Um, in a group that that can be quite annoying. So I, I think putting them in that spot is a, is a good spot. What are some other enemies I think are just kind of annoying? Uh, actually, I think the I think the updated Granados, I'm assuming that this is the Granados that you encounter on the military base, so in the last section of the games. Yeah, these ones are really, really annoying because they have upgraded from using farm tools and pitchforks to guns and crossbows uh that can definitely be annoying <laughs> and i would say that this is kind of the beginning of resident evil's kind of slight transition into being a more action game because now you have enemies that are firing weapons at you so yeah uh, a lot of people like to complain that it started in resident evil's 5 and 6 but heck there were enemies in resident evil 4 that definitely had guns and uh, could do some serious damage and you know what just to play it fair i'm actually gonna also pair the uh I'm actually going to pair the uh, monks too. Uh, the monks, I think, are the most annoying, at least for me. So I kind of, I'm going to pair just the standard Granado enemies all into the more annoying because as 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 individuals, they're fine, but like as a group, they're annoying. Especially when you encounter when you first enter the castle uh, and you go into that one that one really really big room and you have to deal with like a lot of these monks. I mean, they're carrying, they're shooting at a distance from crossbows. They're trying to grab Ashley, they're carrying size, and they're attacking you from multiple different angles. That is the worst. That one section is the personification of why the monks, at least in my experience, have always been the most annoying of all the standard Granado enemies. So, yeah, I think that's where I would put them. And in terms of everybody else, um, I think that's about it. As we go on to the C tier, right off the back, the one I would put are some of the the dogs and wolf 
parasitic infected enemies. Uh, when you first encounter these guys, they attack as a pack. They're fast. They can be somewhat hard to difficult if you don't have the right gun. And I'm, I do think that they kind of encounter you um, in multiple sections while you're still in the village period of the game. I do know that they, they do attack uh, a few times that I can remember, especially when you like immediately are trying to rescue Rashi early on. Um, yeah, these, these, these guys can be a threat, especially like if, especially if you're counting a pack of them. So that's where I would put them. Uh, who else would I say is average? Um, uh, believe it or not, I actually, I'm actually going to add the individual Chainsaw Granado. I mean, as far as in my experience, I don't think I've ever actually been killed. But, like, you take one of these guys and you give him a chainsaw. Anytime you add a chainsaw to any enemy, it's a, it's a, it's a little unnerving. I don't think as humans we're like, a, I mean, unless you're like, I don't know, like, you cut trees for a living. We're accustomed to chainsaws. So, like, if you ever hear a chainsaw close by, you know, you might be, might get, like, a little, like, what's going on? Because uh, chainsaws can do pretty serious damage to the human body if you catch my drift. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, I think that's where I put him. Uh, another enemy that I would also put, I would put, I would put, I would put him. Uh the bo I like I like this boss fight. The only difficult part is it's kind of a little hard to to maneuver the boat. The actual fight itself is a really really cool setting, but I just think maneuvering the boat is easily the most challenging factor. And I'm not even exactly sure what that is. I thought it was like a whale or or something, but even to this day I don't exactly know what that enemy is, but it it is memorable at least to me. Uh let's see who else. Um I think the last one that I would put is i'm gonna put the el gigantes i think average when you first encounter them it, if, if, you, if you've you, you only encounter them as far as i can recall on three occasions uh i believe in one case you encounter two of them at one time but um if you know what to do they're, they're not that that hard to deal with but i think head to head if you know what you're doing pretty average nothing too crazy so i think that's sort of i think the el gigantes uh, are pretty average. Uh, as we get to the more serious threat, uh, stay alert. Yeah. Um, first, right off the top of the back, um, I absolutely need to stay alert for the kind of armored parasitic enemies. These ones are annoying because you 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 need there's three types of ways to deal with these guys. Either you better hope you still have some magnum ammunition ammunition to deal with them because you shoot them in the head and their helmets pop off. Make sure you carry lots of shotgun ammunition to target their heads too to expose the parasites. And above all, please, please save your flash grenades. Your flash grenades are your best friend and the best tool. Flash grenades typically can be used as distractions, but against some of the, even some of the stronger parasitic enemies, they are they are absolute deaf to them. You really need to stay uh, stay alert with these guys because when they're armored and you're stuck in a confined area and they attack you as a group, if you don't know what you're doing, they they can kill you. And trust me, even when I played this game multiple multiple times, I have gotten killed in the in the sections where you have to deal with these guys. So yeah, even, even with my experience. Uh, also, another stay alert, I'm going to add the Chainsaw Sisters. I'm actually going to put them a little bit ahead of the Armored Parasitic Enemies. There's a pa Right after you deal with the scenario where you're trapped in the house and you're fighting the, off the waves of, of um, Granados with Luis, um, you're given two paths. You can either deal with the Chainsaw Sisters or you can deal with the El Gigante. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to avoid the Chainsaw Sisters. I, I don't like Chainsaw enemies. I don't like Chainsaws in general. So I typically try to avoid them. And heck, if just dealing with one guy with a Chainsaw is bad enough, try dealing with two Psycho Sisters. No thanks. I will take the El Gigante most days unless I want to go back, take on the Sisters, and then get the Ruby. I know in some situations you can actually deal with both of them, but I... I, I typically try to uh, avoid the sisters, so yeah. Next, I am going to put the minigun granados. <sighs> Miniguns. Pretty serious. And these guys can take a lot of damage. Like, trust me, these, these bastards can take so many headshots. And so, yeah. 
And trust me, the mini guns can do a serious amount of damage. So yeah, you you really out of all of the Granado enemies that use guns, that is the one you need to be the most concerned about. Because trust me, not only are they tough to take down unless you're using the right weapon, um, if they get a shot off on you, I mean they kill some of their own enemies, but like if they hit you, yeah, it'll it'll do some serious damage. Uh, who's next? Um, I am going to put the regenerator as a stay alert. Um, early on when you first engage these guys, you know, you just, you shoot them and shoot them and shoot them and they regenerate and then you, you, you don't want to, you, you don't want to let these guys get close. Um, in some cases you try to just damage them enough so you can run past them. Uh, I know in the last section there's like this area where you can kind of like two or three of them at once. So, um, I typically have enough ammo to kind of kill them if you have the mine thrower or the mine launcher. Um, but yeah, um pretty serious threat definitely one of the more difficult enemies that you absolutely want you do not want to be caught off guard and just the kind of it's like it's breathing is always unsettling to me who else would i stay alert with um i would also stay alert with you know i'd stay alert with the chief the, ch the chief is a little challenging at first because there's two phases of him so um but i i would stay alert with him um, believe it or not, I think I've actually seen somebody beat this guy with a knife because I've seen someone do like a knife playthrough, and they somehow were able to take the, take the chief down with a knife, which is pretty pretty impressive. And who would I also say you need to stay alert with? Uh, I would stay alert with Krauser. I think I think I think Krauser is the ultimate stay alert guy. Believe it or not, I actually saw a list today. Uh, apparently, someone ranked Krauser as like one of the hardest bosses, and he really isn't. The setup to the fight itself is cool because it's done in stages, and I think that's cool. But when you get to the final part, when he's actually mutates his arm, the funny thing about Krauser and feels so fitting is that, without question, the best weapon to use against Krauser is the knife. And that works almost perfectly. So like, pretty much all you gotta do is just pop your knife out, get real close, and the second it gets close, just start knifing him. And hey, sometimes you can even take him out in one go. It just felt so perfect that he's like this massive threat with this gigantic arm, and yet your little knife does the most damage. So, yeah. So I think that's what I would say is uh, the top of the stay alert. So let's go to the challenging department. Uh, right off the back, uh, I forget what this guy's name is, but this is a, this is easily, I for, I, I'm sorry for forget, forgetting his name, forgetting his name, but this is easily one of the coolest design enemies because not only is this like an enhanced human with a giant parasite on the back, these guys have their eyelids shut, and so they attack pretty much anything with sound. And I, I'll even go so far as to say this: I don't like to give the remake of Resident Evil 4 any credit for anything. But I will say, I have seen the designs for these type of enemies in the remake, and I will admit, they are quite impressive. I'll stick to the original, but I think the remake did a pretty good job with these guys as well. Um, the fact that they can only use sound and you kind of need to be careful is a, a brilliant idea for an enemy. Uh, and especially, it gets kind of scary when you encounter two of them at one time. That and, and trust me, if you get hit by one of these guys, these guys can easily take off your head in just a few swipes. So you, these these things are, are quite challenging if you do not know how to approach them. You really, really need to be aware of your surroundings and have the right weapons to take them out. Because just shooting them in the back, they have quick alert abilities. So like if you hit them once and they come right at you, like you're going to be in real trouble. Uh, another eye enemy that may not seem challenging to I'm sure most of you guys but like with me having my personal fears and phobias these guys every time I encounter them I always get unnerved and that is these insects oh my god I hate the nest section that is the only section in Resident Evil even after all these years every time I have to go in that area I'm always unnerved just the buzzing noise just it, it unnerves me. And as someone who has a genuine serious scare, even as a 33-year-old man, I have a serious fear of bugs. Especially bugs that can fly. Those things are the worst. <laughs> like, even though I know how to approach them, 
These guys are constantly flying around. They can kind of charge at you and kick Leon back. They attack in large groups. They can fly and then some can be on the ground. I mean, you really have, I mean, you really need to know what you're doing, dealing with these bugs, especially the nest. Easily one of the creepiest areas in Resident Evil, without question, which is why they're, 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 they're challenging, at least for me. Next, I am going to go with I'm actually going to go with Salazar. Uh, knowing little bastard, kind of funny at times, mildly entertaining, uh, but his actual boss fight I think is pretty creative. I love the env environment. I love how you kind of have to attack the primary eye of the like kind of main mouth, and then when you do enough damage to the eye, Salazar himself gets exposed, and you can shoot that. I typically don't like to waste my time with him. I typically like to buy a rocket launcher right at the beginning, so once I've done enough damage to the eye and Salazar is ex exposed, I'll fire a rocket launcher, take about one kit. It's, I can't even remember the last time I tried beating Salazar straight up. I typically like to use a rocket launcher, which is why I always find... So for me to have to do that every time uh, it puts him in challenge him because I, I respect that... That is a difficult fight to deal with in, in many cases. Um, so I, I I respect Salazar. So that's why I would put him in challenge because I, I, I typically find cheap ways to beat him instead of trying to beat him straight up. Uh, uh, next, I'm going to put Sattler as the top of the challenge. Uh, he's the final boss. He's the final boss for a reason. He isn't necessarily hard. You just have to hit, know how to hit him and use the environment the right way. Um, but he, he can be challenging in some cases. Um, and I think he's a, he absolutely is a worthy final boss. Um, he's just not the creepiest, at least for me personally. So that's, that's where I would put him. And now we go into the S tier. And boy, is this the stuff of nightmares. The first one that... I have to put in the uh, oh god the S tier is first the ver I'm hoping I'm saying this right is the Verdugo which is like one of Salazar's like bodyguards not only is this a creepy look but just the whole atmosphere of the fight itself is very unnerving because you're down in the sewers and as you're kind of making way through them he has like this tendency to just like, like attack you from multiple directions. He'll like maybe he'll attack you from the bottom. He might have to attack you from the top. Um, so you need to be staying alert with uh, your uh, dodge buttons. Um, but much like Saddler, this is also a person who I do not like fighting straight up. I always buy a rocket launcher. I always wait till I hit him with the with the the freeze gas or the liquid nitrogen, and then I make sure I have to hit this guy with a rocket launcher. If I miss. I will, re I will reset to the checkpoint. This is not someone I like to deal with. He's a creepy design and a creepy atmosphere and is someone I do not like fighting head on. It's been a very long time since I've actually taken him on head on. I like taking the cheap route out just to get through them as quickly as possible. And that is enough for me to respect him as easily a nightmare threat. It's just someone I just do not want to deal with because it's, it, it's hard. It's hard even if you know what to do. Because, heck, even if you use Look at Nitrogen multiple times, it takes multiple times. So, yeah. Next, uh, the Iron Maidens. Ooh, this... If you thought the Regenerators are bad, the Iron Maidens are, without question, one of the creepiest designs for an enemy in Resident Evil history. I mean, they seem... These, these pretty much are, is a souped-up Regenerator... And the only way to really take it out is to take is to, is to shoot its parasites. Which, if you don't, pick, you have to pick up this like infrared scope that allows you to see them. But if you don't have that, or you sell it, or if you're, you get rid of it, or you miss it, then uh, yeah, these things are are pretty tough. I don't think you encounter too many Iron Maidens, but like when you do encounter them, it's always in a very kind of small area. So yeah, and they can take a lot more damage than the uh, than the regenerators. But yeah, definitely definitely creepy. But above all, the top of the food chain has to go to it. Now, the fact that, the, uh, as far as I'm, as far as I know, they took it completely out of the remake, which pisses me off because it was like there was so much build up to it, and I love the it fight because you're fighting him in across like these three main container areas, and much like the 
of Verdugo, Verdugo, Verdugo I hope I'm almost saying that right. This guy likes to attack you from multiple different directions. And then when you finally get off of these platforms and you have to fight them straight up, like that fight itself can, can be challenging. Now, much like the Vertigo and Salazar fight, this is also a boss that most times I like to take the cheap route and just buy a rocket launch before I engage him. But other times I'm actually willing to take him on head on. And I think that's, that's what makes him different from the other two that I like to take out cheaply. It's like sometimes I want to take him out cheaply and then other times I want to take him on straight on. And I feel like it's a very worthy challenge. It's like, if he kills me, it's because he earned it. He got it. Because, trust me, by this point in the game, I typically, like, he, he burnt, like, even by the time you beat him, he, like, burns through, like, a lot of my resources. He'll, like, burn through, like, two or three different guns, use up all my grenades and incendiaries. Like, it is the quintessential, every time I go into this fight, if I choose to take him straight on, it is a challenge. I sometimes die going straight on, and that's something as an enemy I respect. Plus, I absolutely love its design. So, yeah, that's why out of all the Resident Evil enemies, it takes the top of the food chain being in the S-tier nightmare department. So, that is my tier list ranking of all the Resident Evil enemies. I would like to know, if you enjoyed Resident Evil as much as I do, how would you rank these enemies? Share your ranking with me and Elnos in the comments down below. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I'll see you guys next time.